Hey, Bulls and Bears, JJ here. Bull to the bust. It is Tuesday, February 18th. Wanted to get another video out today. There's a lot of economic news being reported, uh, statistics and data that I think are going to be uh, interesting to you and kind of get a gauge on the direction, the real direction of the economy, not what is being pushed out there by the mainstream media uh, for the most part. There is a very big disconnect in the message being put out there through uh, mainstream media versus alternative news sources, for example, YouTubers, uh, people like you and me that are just uh, mainstream, I would just say mainstream, middle class Americans. All right, remember, the news anchors, they're paid to say what they're going to say. If you look at the salaries of some of these mainstream news anchors, it is in the millions of dollars a year if you're talking about national news. Now, even local newscasters are paid pretty well, many times six figures or higher. Now, as we talked about in one of our previous videos, even people making six figures, over 30% of them are running out of money between paychecks. And when you look at the overall population, it's about 70 to 80% of people living paycheck to paycheck, running out of money between paychecks. It's actually the millennials and that age group that are the biggest, um, the, the largest category of individuals living paycheck to paycheck, running out of money between paychecks. It's closer to 80% for millennials, but overall it's right around 70% for all of U.S. But even six-figure earners, you know, think about that, uh, over 30% of them living paycheck to paycheck. All right, so let's get into some more economic reality here. Um, right now there's a huge bubble being blown up through lending, through the issuance of debt. And what is being done right now is people are encouraged to take on debt because they're in a bull market mentality. They feel like prices are going to continue to go up. And again, most people think this is based on some sort of sound fundamental uh, factors. So I look at it as a, a mass fooling of the population. And I'm not saying they're fools, I'm just saying that a lot of people do not realize what is keeping this economy from imploding. And many would argue that the, the economy has imploded. When you look at the labor force participation rate, let's take a look here out of trading economics. We never recovered from the financial crisis. You see in the late 2000s, the labor force participation rate took a huge, huge drop down to about 63% or so. And we've only since recovered just slightly uh, up to about 63% right now since 2016, about a maybe a 1% increase in that participation rate. Right? We have people that have dropped out of the labor force completely that have just given up. They're no longer counted as a statistic. They are not rolled up in the official unemployment numbers. And that's why you have uh, certain people out there like shadow stats. Uh, saying that the unemployment number is actually much, much higher. It's over 20%, well over 20%. And when you look at the participation rate, it makes perfect sense. We have people that are no longer counted in these stats. They are uh, non-factors. They're not figured into the total uh, fake number that's being put out there, again, by mainstream media. Of course, the White House, the politicians, they are going to point to the manipulated numbers to make themselves look better and that way they can take credit for uh, what looks like a booming economy if you just look at the numbers if you just look at the surface right but really we have never recovered it's a stimulus based economy and it can keep the illusion uh, up in front of everyone's face that everything is fine when behind the scenes it's a disaster people are living paycheck to paycheck defaults are increasing and sure there are some areas that are doing pretty good I mean, we do have a little bit of a trickle down with the billions that are being pumped into the corporations and the corporations taking on debt to buy back their own shares. There's a little bit that trickles down with some wage increases, but we're talking about a fraction of a percent of the money that's being held at the top by the elites, by the top 1%. Okay, the biggest beneficiaries of a booming stock market are the, the upper level individuals at these corporations. The CEOs, the chief financial officers, the CFOs, the executives, and also the stakeholders in these companies that own the most stocks are benefiting from the rising stock market. And they are a lot of them are cashing out. And we've 
documented that here several times. If you look at most companies and you look at the recent insider transactions, it's sale, 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 sale. 90%, uh, even 99% with some of these companies. Right, so this is a mass looting that's taking place right now in the economy. And let's talk about renters and how much they are paying on average towards rent regarding their income study. One in four renters spend more than half of their income on housing. Renters right now in the United States are being squeezed big time. And a lot of people are having to resort to uh, moving in with relatives, uh, getting roommates, a lot of couples are putting off having children so both people can work. And in some cases, we have both people working and one of the two and sometimes both individuals working multiple jobs. We have people leaving their day job, their 40-hour-a-week job, to go to a gig economy job. And maybe they're working part-time at Starbucks or the bookstore or uh, maybe they're a driver, Uber or Lyft. Uh, Uber and Lyft drivers are very uh, common now. It seems like every time I go somewhere, I see... Uh, cars with the stickers on the back, Uber and Lyft drivers. All right, so more out of this. This is out of KITV. Uh, a new study by the Joint Center for Housing Studies at Harvard finds that 11 million renters spend more than 50% of their income on housing in 2018. All right, so think about that. More than half of your income just to keep a roof over your head. All right, and I'll go back to this, and I've discussed this several times. After the housing market crashed or took a big drop, depending on how severe it was in your area. The biggest beneficiaries were the rich, the, the wealthy, the investors that were sitting back waiting for that buying opportunity. And that's what happened. A lot of investors, a lot of institutions came in, in some cases scooped up thousands of homes, turned around and then rented those homes out. In some cases, people that owned their home just a few years earlier, they got foreclosed had to turn around and rent a home back that was just owned by the owner occupant and now they t are turned into renters and we see the home ownership rate has not recovered also since the financial crisis. It was a wealth transfer. Uh, people that believed the economy was great, that nothing bad could ever happen, went out and bought the biggest, most expensive home that they could get qualified for and boom, it turned around and bid them back because a lot of people ended up losing their homes and the people that were patient, that were waiting, that had cash came in, and now those are the landlords, and the former owners are now the renters in many cases, not all, not all situations, of course. Now let's talk about the credit scoring system a little bit. Now when you see Americans on average in record levels of debt, do you think that should be looked at as a positive thing or a negative thing? Well, debt typically should be looked at as negative, in my opinion, and I'm, I'm thinking a lot of you might agree on that. But the opposite is happening when it comes to credit scores. Even though the average American, uh, most Americans are in some sort of debt, and most of that debt is worse, the levels of debt are now worse than the 2008 financial crisis. And here we are. Instead of lower credit scores, credit scores in America just hit a record high. So they are rewarding people with higher credit scores for being in debt. And what they'll say and how they justify it is, well, the more debt you have or the more loans or the more balances, including revolving credit card balances, and if you continue to pay that on time without late payments, that's looked at as a better risk. And it's justified then by giving that person a better, a higher credit score. Now, what's going to happen when the stimulus stops, when the banks are no longer increasing people's lines of credit and instead are decreasing people's lines of credit? All these people that are carrying monthly balances uh, on their credit cards, for example, uh, sometimes for a year or more, what are they going to do when the credit lines stop increasing? When the banks finally say, hey, this is enough, even though we're getting all this 0% interest cash from the Fed, we think it's time to go ahead and pull back and not allow endless debt. That's going to cause a domino effect to begin. And keep in mind, when banks stop increasing lines of credit, when they stop lending, when they start being a little more choosy on who they're lending to, that's when the music stops. And if it's a game of musical chairs, you're going to see a lot of people scrambling, but there's only going to be a few chairs. Okay, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm going to say if and when it happens, when the banks stop 
lending or when the Fed stops liquefying the banks, uh, whenever that time frame is, you tell me down in comments, is it the end of 2020? Is it going to be a never ending boom, a never ending bull market that's just going to lead us into hyperinflation and they're going to totally destroy the currency? I don't think that's going to happen. But again, I'm just one person. I could be wrong. I'd like to read comments and let uh, you let me know what you think. And I think most of us here on this channel are, are kind of on the same page. We think that it's still going to be uh, the continuation of the boom and bust cycle. Uh, right now, this current bull run, this current booming economy, quotations around the word booming, is going to continue at least through the end of 2020. All right, but what do we think about this? One-fourth of Americans uh, spend more than half of their paycheck just on rent, just keeping a roof over their head. And think about the other expenses that most people have to deal with. Of course, food prices, energy if you want utilities. Uh, unless you're living in the dark, you got to have electricity. Or you have to have insurance if you have a car. Most people that have a job have to have a car. Unless you're living in a downtown area with a subway or a, a train to take to work. All right? People are being squeezed and people are getting further and further into debt. Uh, most people are in some sort of debt, whether it's student loan debt, credit card debt, mortgages, car loan, you name it. Most people are in debt. And debt levels are increasing, not decreasing. So this is being pointed at as a great economy when actually it should be the opposite. When debt levels are rising, it should be a big red flag. Hey, this economy is not good. People are having to take on continuous amounts of debt. But people that spend a big chunk of their paycheck just on these meals, uh, sometimes at fast food restaurants, uh, two or three times a day, every day. Um, not only is it not healthy for your wallet, it's not healthy for your waistline. Uh, heart disease is the biggest killer in the U.S., uh, regardless of what they try to tell you to be scared of. You know, with the outbreaks that we're seeing and, you know, different types of violence, it is heart disease that is still the number one killer in America. We have uh, a country that is hooked on fast food. People want it right now. And a, a big part of that, again, is because people are busy, people working multiple jobs in many cases. A lot of people don't even have time to make their own food, even if they wanted to. Now, as this article points out, now for the bad news, and it's laid out here, and I'll read just an excerpt out of this. Now for the bad news, rising credit scores doesn't necessarily mean Americans are better off financially on-time payments haven't translated into lower debt balance. In fact, debt balances have risen on average over the past year for most types of loans. And this was a study put out by Experian. And another study from Bankrate found that two-thirds of people with credit card debt owe at least as much now as they have over the past decade. All right, so again, a lot of it is foolish spending unnecessary spending, luxury items, entertainment items that can be cut out. But why would people cut out if they're being fed that the economy, if they're being told that this economy is the greatest ever? I think people are in a uh, false sense of uh, safety. And, uh, of course, we have to ask the question, how long is this going to last? Okay, do you really think if the Fed decided to let the banking system try to run naturally. I'm not even sure if naturally is a good word when it comes to the banking system because none of it's natural. But if they stopped the stimulus, what do you think would happen? Well, I think I can tell you what happened. Banks would not have enough capital to continue lending because many of them, in search of more and more profits, larger and larger profits, have lent out way more money than they have in reserves. And we know there's a fractional reserve banking system, so that's the normal. But we're talking about lending out many, many times more than they should be lending out, even within the, the fractional reserve banking system, which is already a moral hazard. It's already a disaster uh, waiting to uh, implode on itself when the deciders decide it's time for it to implode. All we can do is be prepared, be aware Thanks for watching this update. Like to hear from you down in comments on this. Hope everyone is well and prepared for what lies ahead of us in this economy. Thank you for watching this report. Bye for now.